All right, so it is no secret that conservative politicians and pundits alike frequently like to use these extremely wedge culture war battles to distract from the fact that their actual underlying economic agenda is completely against the interests of the working class here in the United States. And one of these politicians who likes to engage in these heated culture war battles is Senator Josh Hawley. And uh, Senator Josh Hawley basically did an interview with Axios where he gave his views on this vague concept of manliness, which he describes as being under attacked by the woke radical left and uh, I just wanted to watch through this clip with you guys and give you my breakdown because I think it's actually like pretty insightful in terms of where conservatives are heading in the future in these culture war battles and uh, how we as socialists and actual leftists can undercut their message let's go ahead and uh, hear from Senator Josh Hawley himself whining about how manliness is apparently under attack here in the United States Senator you gave a pretty hot speech at the National Conservatism Conference in Orlando you talked about the left's attack on men of America. Yeah. Why masculinity as your new big issue? Well, I think what the left is doing is attacking America. They're saying that America is systemically oppressive and men are systemically responsible. What's a man to you? Paint a picture. What's a man? Well, a man is a father, a man is a husband, a man is somebody who takes responsibility. As conservatives, we've got to call men back to responsibility. We've got to say that spending your time not working, and we have more and more men who are not working, spending your time on video games, spending your time watching porn online while doing nothing is not good for you, your family, or this country. So a viewer is watching this and they're thinking, really, what the liberals are doing are going to push me to watch Pornhub more or play Donkey Kong more? Do you mean that literally? Well, what I mean literally is that I think the liberal attack, the left-wing attack on manhood says to men, you're part of the problem. It says that your, your masculinity is inherently problematic. It's inherently oppressive. What's your basis for linking that to what liberals or the left, as you would say, do? Is that based on data or based on a hunch? Well, it's policy over many years. I mean, if you look at the policy of deindustrialization, those are policy choices Mike pursued over many years. I've looked wait, at wait, how does that connect to porn? Oh, well, you've got, you've got men, 16 million men, Mike, who are idle, who don't have anything to do. Now, partly that's their own responsibility, but also partly it's because jobs have dried up in many cities across America and rural areas, too. I think you put together lack of jobs, you put together fatherlessness, you put together the social messages that we teach our kids in school. I think we've got to confront that and its effects. All right, so listen, okay, the general idea of what he was basically trying to say there is one that somehow this idea of masculinity as he again vaguely defines it in terms of like having a job and, and supporting your family and etc cetera, etc cetera, the key point that he was actually trying to hammer home there and this is why you know i frequently say why they use these culture war battles in order to distract from the actual you know pro-capitalist pro-corporate agenda that they have underlying their actual ideology this is a perfect example of this okay because even though he talks about porn as if like widespread porn use is the biggest issue facing men in America today, or video games, as if video games are the prime issue facing men in America today, he also slips in the actual real concrete issue of deindustrialization de and the loss of uh, working class jobs that could support a middle class family here in the United States um, that have been completely gutted and shipped overseas, okay? And so he kind of touches on something that is a real concept here in the United States, but then he also tries to tie that into like this vague concept of the left or liberals attacking masculinity when it's like, dude, if you actually wanted to address the issues that are facing men in America as you want to define them, then deindustrialization is a massively important issue. But he doesn't talk about a class analysis of deindustrialization. Notice how when he talks about deindustrialization, he doesn't bring up the shit like this. Okay, so here from Joseph Stiglitz, US trade deals were designed to serve corporations at the expense of workers. And basically what he's talking about here is that over the last number of decades, okay, we have had this massive deindustrialization. We've seen this in the Midwest, but all around the United States as well. And basically, this was the result of both Republican and Democratic administrations who have completely sold out the American working class, specifically, you know, car manufacturers is the key example that we look to, you know, these uh, abandoned uh, 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 cities, basically, or towns in Detroit and all over the Midwest uh, that used to be these massive middle class towns that were uh, uh, construction towns that were towns that were centered around a lot of these massive industries that have now left the United States and gone overseas to basically um, increase the profit margins of these massive corporations 
these multinational U.S. corporations um, to, to, to benefit a handful of these capitalists at the expense of the American working class. So that is the class analysis that he just refuses to touch on in this entire analysis that he is giving here. He tries to paint it as if it's just an issue of uh, the liberals or the left attacking men in the United States instead of an issue of the capitalist ownership class sacrificing American jobs to go exploit cheap labor overseas, which is the actual dynamic that both Republicans and Democrats, liberals, if you want to call them that, and conservatives have been pushing for decades. That is the key point that he refuses to acknowledge in this entire analysis. And it's the whole point. I mean, it's the main point of why so many working class Americans in this country right now feel like they have been abandoned by both parties. They feel like they have been abandoned by the corporate duopoly. Why? Because again, we've spent decades and decades and decades of both parties completely selling out the working class so that these multinational corporations can go and ship their jobs overseas to go exploit labor in China or in you know Malaysia or any of these other countries that are relying on exploited labor in order to max maximize their profit mo margins, okay? That is the actual dynamic of what is going on here and yet josh hawley wants you to believe that all of this suffering that has been uh felt by the working class here in the united states over the last couple of decades he wants you to believe that all of this suffering is because of masculinity being attacked again these people these conservatives whether it's pundits or politicians they have no real definition of what it means to be perfectly masculine okay and i hate to bring up this example because listen i'm not the type of guy who typically likes to make fun of other people's personalities or uh, make fun of other people's like appearance and stuff but this is the same type of bullshit rhetoric that we hear from conservatives like ben shapiro who frequently bring up this idea of the ideal masculine figure okay and listen i'm not somebody who i pride myself on like maximum sigma uh you know a uh, uh, masculinity or anything like that but listen i'm a 6'2 guy right i think i'm pretty athletic and if you were to compare my physique and my masculinity under their own bullshit definitions of whatever the fuck that means, then Ben Shapiro would not be in the same conversation, okay? That's what you got to understand is that all of these definitions are completely arbitrary, they're completely made up, and they're trying to confine people into these boxes that they themselves frequently cannot fit into themselves, okay? Ben Shapiro is, is a very short man, he's not very athletic, he's not, you know, he's got a squeaky high little voice, right? This is not somebody who you would typically associate with the ideal masculine uh, figure, if you want to call it that right so the idea is that all of these conservatives pundits and politicians they are setting these arbitrary definitions and and trying to define in these rigid boxes what it means to be masculine when they're really just trying to serve the interests of the capitalist class by distracting from the fact that yes this deindustrialization had a massive impact a deleterious uh, impact on the working class here in the united states but th that is a result of the capitalist system that is not the result of the woke radical left coming after masculinity here in the united states okay so that is a key point that you got to take away from bullshit talking points like this from josh hawley but again Josh Hawley is the future of the Republican Party. This is the type of bullshit rhetoric that they're going to be trying to deploy uh, to lift up, basically, these uh, uh, white, fragile Americans who do feel like, rightfully so, that they have been abandoned by both parties, but who are now, potentially, because of this rhetoric by Josh Hawley and other conservative pundits, are going to believe that it is the fault of the woke left, that it is the fault of socialists and these radical commies who are coming after their masculinity, when it's the complete opposite, okay? Me, as a socialist, I believe in democracy, not only in the political realm, in the political realm, but also in the economic sphere, okay? That is the key point to getting Americans, to getting the American working class who have been thoroughly abandoned by both of our corporate duopoly uh, parties that we have here in the United States, the key to getting them to feel like they actually have some control and some uh, a real ability to uh, have an influence over their own destiny is giving them democracy in the workplace, giving them socialism, giving them the ability to participate in what basically absorbs the vast majority of their time in their work, in their labor, which they are frequently being exploited, whether or not their jobs are being shipped overseas, that's a part of it. But also, if they e even are here uh, in the manufacturing jobs that we still have here in the United States, they're still being exploited by the capitalist class. So that's the main distinction that you have to understand, is that this is a class issue, and yet Josh Hawley, Ben Shapiro, the rest of these motherfuckers who are focusing in on this random, arbitrary definition of masculinity, they're trying to distract and protect the capitalist ownership class. So understand that.